words. Whenever you read extended texts in English, you will come across words which you do not know. Even native speakers will not know all the words when they are reading. Your instinct is probably to look up the unfamiliar words in a dictionary. If you do this for each word, however, it will take you a great deal of time, and you may never reach the end of the text. You therefore need to develop strategies for dealing with unknown words. On this page, you can read about how to deal with unknown words, using context to guess meaning, using prefixes, suffixes, and words roots. There are also some activities to help you practice this area of EAP. How to deal with unknown words. There are two questions to ask yourself whenever you meet an unfamiliar word. The first question is, do I need to know the meaning of the word? If not, you can keep reading and ignore the word. In order to answer this question, you need to make sure you have a clear purpose in your reading. The second question you need to ask is, is an approximate meaning enough? If not, you need to look the word up in a dictionary. If the answer to both questions above is yes, it means you can guess what the word means then keep reading. Use the following to help you guess an approximate meaning. Examine the immediate context of the word, i.e. the sentence in which it appears, and words which come before and after, pay particular attention to linking words, examine the wider context of the word, i.e. other sentences in the paragraph, look at the structure of the word, i.e. prefix, suffix, root. Using context. When you guess the meaning of a word from context, you need to consider first the immediate context, i.e. the other words in the sentence. If this is not enough, you need to use the wider context. I.e. sentences which come before and after the one which contains the word you are guessing. Immediate context. Consider the following sentence. Although the company's income from sales was higher than expected, its high costs in the form of salaries and other overheads put it in a disadvantageous position. Imagine the word you want to guess in this sentence is disadvantageous, it doesn't matter if you already know this word, this is just an example. The immediate context of the word tells you the following. It is probably an adjective, because it comes before a noun, position, it is probably negative, because it relates to high costs, which are not usually good for a company, it is probably negative, because the sentence begins with although, a contrast marker, so the idea in the second clause contrasts with the first clause, which is positive, high income is good for a company. A good guess for the word at this point would be bad. This is probably close enough for you to understand the main idea, and you would be able to keep reading. Wider context. Now consider the following paragraph. Although the company's income from sales was higher than expected, its high costs in the form of salaries and other overheads put it in a disadvantageous position. This was one of the main reasons why the company folded. This put all 200 of its employees out of work. Imagine the word you want to guess this time is folded, this is a common word, but it has a special meaning in this sentence. The immediate context of the word does not tell you much. It is clearly a verb, but it is difficult to determine more than this using only the sentence it occurs in. To guess the meaning, you need to use the wider context, i.e. the sentences which come before and after. Using these, you can tell the following. It is probably negative, because it is the result of the company's disadvantageous, bad, position, it is something which can happen to companies. It resulted in all of the company's employees being out of work. From this, you can guess that the word means something like stopped or stop doing business because no one works there anymore. In fact, to fold in this context means of a company etc. to close because it is not successful. Using prefix, suffix, root. Again, Consider the following sentence, although the company's income from sales was higher than expected, 
its high costs in the form of salaries and other overheads put it in a disadvantageous position. Imagine, again, that the word you want to guess in this sentence is disadvantageous. This word can be broken down into three components, dis dash, which is the prefix, advantage, which is the root, and us, which is the suffix. You can get the following information by studying the word in this way. It is probably an adjective, because it ends in us, which is a common suffix for adjectives. It is probably negative, because it begins with a negative prefix dis. Its meaning is probably opposite to the root of the word advantage. Easily using context. Clues to find the meaning of an unknown word. Using context clues is an explicitly taught reading strategy that students use to figure out the meaning of an unknown word, Fleming, 2014. When coming across an unknown word, a student uses other words in the text that are usually in the same sentence or nearby sentences that provide clues to the meaning of the unfamiliar word. These clues may include synonyms, antonyms, definitions, or examples. Students can also use clues from meaningful word parts such as the base word, prefixes or suffixes. Four-step process used to guide students' use of context clues 1. Look at the unfamiliar word, then read the sentence before and after the word 2. Connect what you know with the text 3. Predict a meaning 4. Confirm or revise your prediction. Reread the sentence using your prediction. Are you satisfied with your prediction or do you need to read further back or forward in the text to see if the author provides more clues? Do you need to use a resource beyond the text? If so, try a dictionary or ask someone. Guiding questions. What do you think the word means? Which clues did you use to help you predict the meaning of the word? How did the author help you understand new words? What synonyms or antonyms help you define new words from the selection? What examples did the author write to help readers understand new ideas? Did the author use comparisons to help describe new ideas? Implementation tips remind students to reference context clue visual aids, such as posters and bookmarks with a checklist of strategies. Provide students with ample opportunities to practice this strategy using authentic texts at their independent reading level. For students who need additional practice, supplement with shorter chunks of text on task cards or worksheets. Find opportunities to continually model the strategy during read aloud, in morning messages and in content-specific subject areas such as science or social studies. Further strategies for using context clues in reading to find meanings of unknown word with using a dictionary. We often ask students to use context clues to figure out a word's meaning. That makes it is our job as teachers to formally teach how authors use them. In doing so, students become armed with an inventory of ways, such as reading response questions, to access unknown words to help gain a deeper meaning of the text. Without awareness of the types of context clues, students are at a disadvantage to decipher meanings for themselves. Teaching this skill supports self-agency so students can define unfamiliar words independently. The following are devices that authors use to incorporate context clues into their writing. The point is not that students memorize each type of context clue. It is more that they come to understand that authors give hints in all kinds of ways to help readers figure out what words mean so they are alert to these devices. Although the following list seems straightforward, neat and tidy, demonstrate to students to read the surrounding passage in which unfamiliar words appear. This helps readers infer a word's meaning and appreciate the entire passage where the word resides. 7 Strategies Strategies for using context clues in reading 1. Word Parts The Idea 
break down the different parts of a word, base word, word stem or root word, prefixes, and suffixes, to figure out what it means. Some words have a prefix only, reread, a suffix only, reading, both a prefix and a suffix, pre-reading, a combination, unreadableness, or neither, read. Discrimination dis dash, not, opposite of, reverse, deprive of, apart, away crimin, verdict, judicial decision, judgment tie-in, indicates the word is a noun. 2. Definition slash explanation the idea, look for a definition or an explanation within the sentence. Discrimination or unfairly targeting one or more groups by those who perceive themselves to be superior can cause distress. Vulnerable people are oftentimes in need of protection under certain laws so others cannot take advantage of them. 3. Synonym The idea, words next to the unknown word can be a clue that there is a synonym. Discrimination or bias can cause distress toward the targeted group. When people know they are vulnerable or defenseless, they tend to protect themselves to avoid harm. 4. Example The idea, providing examples of the unknown word can give readers a clue to meaning. Like shunning smokers in restaurants by making them satisfy their habit outside, discrimination targets a perceived undesirable group. Vulnerable people, such as young children, the elderly, or handicapped individuals, might have protections under certain laws. 5. Antonym slash contrast The idea, opposite information Information about the unknown word can be offset by words and phrases such as unlike, as opposed to, different from. Discrimination, as opposed to fairness for all people, can have damaging effects on a targeted group. Vulnerable people, unlike those who can stand up for themselves, tend to be the target of unethical or dangerous individuals. 6. Analogy The idea, comparisons of the word help to determine what it means. The ill effects of discrimination are like hateful, wicked tendrils gripping the heart. Vulnerable people can be like fragile glass in need of care and attention. 7. A positive the idea, look for the grammatical structure of a positives which can provide a definition, synonym, or example. Discrimination, the act of showing bias to one group, can have damaging effects. The elderly and handicapped, a vulnerable group of individuals, have laws to protect them from unethical individuals. Once students identify the context clue, orchestrate activities for students to learn the word so they can use it when speaking and within their writing. Students can complete the graphic organizer in figure A individually or with pairs for several words using online and print resources. About the author Dr. Khalid Malik has a PhD in applied linguistics. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities with vast English teaching experience. Now, at present admitted to a postdoctoral study project at a Canadian university for the topic of language variations.